Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Hell's Bells. <laughs> no, it's a, this is a this is a rivalry that means a lot. But you know, quite honestly, it's it's kind of it's kind of grown into more than that. You know, I, it'd be selfish for me to make it about me. It's so big for this program, and and not just because it's Pitt State, but it's another opportunity to add to the accomplishments that we've had so far early in the season. Uh, what did you take away from last year's game? Are there lessons that you learned from a, from a tight game last year that uh, you need to take into this year? Well, I think uh, we just can't let off the pedal. You know, I, there were times where, and I think we've learned not to let off the pedal, but also just when, as the ball game gets tighter, to be more relaxed. I talked about that early in the season that uh, we're going to play tight ball games. This isn't going to be the only tight ball game. We're, we're going to play four quarters, and so we got to make sure that as we go down the stretch, we're relaxed and, and we can execute. It, it, the confidence level is high. I mean, I told you guys at the beginning of the year, I, I think this is a much improved football team. Um, I, I, liked, I liked the way we looked coming out of the summer, and I still feel the same way about this crew. I, I feel like our ones compete uh, with anybody in the country, Division Two wise and I, I still feel that way. But in terms of a three-game win streak, I, I'll celebrate all the accomplishments at the end of the year. We, we just look at it week to week. Uh, we got to find a way to go undefeated each week, and if we can do that, we'll we'll like where we sit at the end of the year. What's the difference in your team from one year ago? Uh, you know what? I think we're closer. Uh, I think this crew, coaches, players, I think they truly care about each other and each other's success. I mean, the biggest cheerleaders for each other are their teammates. You know, and 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 you can see that we're a lot closer in the locker room. Um, I think we have a, a better understanding of scheme on both sides of the football going through another year with the same coordinator and, and just, again, be, becoming comfortable in our roles. And I think those two things have been the, the biggest changes. Obviously, the past two games, you guys have forced seven turnovers on people's side of the ball. How key is it for you to be able to force turnovers, but also for the offense to take advantage and put some points on the board? Yeah, you know, the, the recipe for success in football hasn't changed in uh, decades you know it's all about taking care of the football and for us on defense we've got to get the ball out we've got to give more possessions to our offense and and offensively we it's, it's the the opposite we got to protect the football we can't afford to give the ball away we can't afford to put our defense in bad spots and so the takeaways have the takeaways have been huge and a huge part of our success on defense uh the biggest takeaway is it's not always going to be pretty you know, this league is so balanced. Uh, this league is so tough from week to week. There, there's not going to be a week where you go, okay, we're just better than this team. It, this is going to be a four-quarter blowout. No, I mean, there's going to be some games where we're going to be in a battle. There's going to be some games where we don't play well for whatever reason. Um, the sign of a good team is finding ways to win, um, even with that going on. Uh, you, you saw it, excuse me, you saw it last week. Um, I, you know, Pitt played an extremely close game with Emporia. Um, UCO beat Northwest. So uh, we can't expect to just go into a week and, and blow a team out. What jumps out about Pittsburgh State to you? Sorry, guys. Um, uh, their defense flies. Man, I, you know, I've commented on how fast their defense is. And typically when you see a defense with this kind of speed, you say, okay, well, we're going to run right at them and run right over them. That ain't the case with old Zeke Wall and the boys up front. I mean, they're, they're a stout group that, that plays really fast. Um, offensively, you know, they're, they're taking advantage of big plays. Um, you know, number nine does a really nice job with the football. And the thing that he does is if it's not there, he'll run and he'll get his yards. He'll pick up the first down and then he'll slide. So that you can tell they're well coached. You can tell that um, they, they, they can do a lot of things on offense. So again, versus Central Missouri, they were airing that thing out, and there were big plays all over the place. Well, versus Emporia, they controlled the line of scrimmage, controlled the clock, and just ran the football. So they're, they're a 4-0 MIAA team. They're going to be a tough out, but um, we'll, we'll see what we can do. You got to like both teams are stout up front. Just how key is it going to be with the defensive line and the offensive line to maybe cause this 
disruption and holding their ground. Yeah. Being able to allow some of your guys on the back end to get through the gaps and create cut chaos. Well, again, I think, uh, you know, again, that's one of those things in football that hasn't changed. The, the game is won in the trenches. Uh, defensively for us, if we can do a good job and be physical and keep their old linemen on the line of scrimmage, our, our backers will have a ton of tackles and we'll get them one dimensional. And, and the same is true for them. If we're not able to run the ball because they're front, you know, it's going to make it tough for Dawson to throw because uh, he's going to be running around all day. So, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's a lot that's you can do a lot to cover up a lot of spots, but when you're weak in the O and D line, it, it makes it really, really hard to play offense and defense. Maybe in practice this week, what's been the, kind of the main focus or the key emphasis? Well, we, we lock in on the process. Again, I, I, sometimes it's hard. You know, you want to hype a game up. You want to say, man, this is a big one. This is a big one. But the reality of it is they're all big ones. You know, they were, it was big when we played Kearney. It was big when we played Northeastern. And it, they, each game is going to be big because the, the ultimate goal is a conference title. And it goes through every opponent in the league. So nothing different. We're, we're just going to do us. We're going to work hard. Uh, we're going to practice. We're going to prepare our guys. And we're going to go out and give it everything on Saturday. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're going to have to run around them a little bit. They are big. Um, they're big guys. They move their feet well. Uh, I, think, I think if we can just do a nice job of moving him off his spot while keeping him in the pocket, that'll pay dividends. Um, and so it, it just comes from uh, not just rushing with speed, but also understanding where you are in relationship to the quarterback, maintaining pass lanes. not <laughs> I again yeah you know, I took this job and I'm, I'm sitting there you know you're sitting there going man this is a tough league and I think a lot of people don't realize how tough it is because our schedule is locked and we only beat up on each other uh and so we don't get a chance to go down you, when I played you would go down and everybody had three or four games to kind of tune up for the season and then you played seven or uh, yeah seven and so you know, it was well known how good the MIAA is. Well, now that the schedule's locked, the only people that know how good it is are the people in the conference that are that are going against it every week, week in and week out. And so, yeah, I'm not shocked. You know, it just, it's hard to win. It's hard to travel and win. And so you see a lot of road teams struggling, especially when you have those overnight trips. Are you glad to have a challenge in your pocket the last minute last week? I, and I, again, I'll say it, I've said it on all my shows this week, uh, I'll eat crow a little bit. I was one of the biggest skeptics of the challenge and just how effective it would be uh, with the league being in its first year, the camera angles. I was nervous, like, all right, this, you know, this is just a formality. It's not going to. But uh, it, it won us the ball game, you know. And so um, I'm very glad that the MIAA has been in the forefront for Division Two and making sure that it's the best league and, and provides the best opportunity for its football. Appreciate it. Um, I mean, they play really hard and uh, they make a lot of big plays. Um, but if we can limit those big plays and we also play really hard as a defense, um, I think we could be pretty successful. Uh, you've been playing this rivalry a few times. Uh, you know, what, what, what does it mean to you and, and being a guy who's you know, grown up in the, you know, in the local community? What's this rivalry? How do you feel? Um, yeah, I, I grew up around here, so I always knew of the uh, Missouri Southern um, versus Pitt State rivalry. but. Um, Right now, I'm just viewing it as another game. Uh, that's how I think we all should view it and uh, stay locked in. Just another game. What all stands out to you with the state offense? Uh, that quarterback, he's really good. He's smart with the football. Um, Bryce Murphy, I played against him. He, he's a playmaker. He makes a lot of big plays. Um, the running back runs hard, and he's fast. Um, O-line's big, but um, yeah. 
That's how much momentum has the defense gone being able to force, like we said, seven turnovers in the past two games? Uh, we get a lot of momentum from that. Um, I mean, every, when we make big plays, you know, everybody's celebrating, and um, all we have to do is give the ball back to the offense, and that's our focus. Um, we have a lot of momentum coming into this week, and yeah. And obviously, going into Fort Hayes State on this third last drive, going into halftime, you guys make that big tackle on the goal line, which forces them to control, get that field goal, and then you guys hold them shut out in the second half. Just how key was that stop right before the half? Uh, I think it played a big role. Um, com coming out of half, we were down early in the game, nine to twenty-one, um, and we fought back and we kept it close. And so that field goal uh, kept us in one one score. So, as we talked to coach, the game in the trenches is going to be won and lost. How key is it going to be for your defensive line to really cause chaos with the offensive line and allow you guys in the back end to really cause chaos? I think it'll be really key. Um, like I said, they're really big. And so if we have those alignment in our face the whole game, I think it could be pretty tough. Right, thank you. Oh, man, really? Okay. You were swatting a fly mid interview. Man, their defensive line is pretty big. They got quick feet. Their edge rushers are pretty good. They jump in a bear quite often. We haven't seen that much. So it's going to be a, a challenge, but I really do believe our offensive line can step up and move the line of scrimmage. How good is it going to be for you guys to really come out and set the tempo and set the tone by really getting the run game going and really grounding the pounds in? I mean, it's the same every week, man. That's what we try to establish first off is the run game, the run game to open up the box, let us throw. So, I mean, we, we can do it, we've shown it, and our offensive line is pretty good. So, I think Nathan's second in the league in rushing right now. Um, you know, how much, you know, his name's beside, but how much pride do you guys take in, in you know, seeing those numbers and, and seeing that you've been able to, to get that going in the first month of the season? I really think it's like, it's just a mutual thing. You know, like our name's attached to his yards just as much as, you know, he depends on us, we depend on him. So, it's just simple. I'd say quite a bit, man. Like, it was a tough win, but it was a good win. Driving, driving six hours is not easy to win a football game, but we go into this week pretty confident. Um, just treating it like another week, but preparing just as hard. So. Did you enjoy the, you know, it's going to be a, uh, you know, rowdy anti Missouri Southern yeah. crowd. Do you, do you enjoy that? Does, does that feel you when you go on the Yeah, so like when we were in Fort Hayes, it was crazy. The student section was right behind us. They were chanting all sorts of kind of stuff. But I mean, it just fueled us. And I mean, you saw how that went. So hopefully we can do it again this week. Do you think uh, Central Oklahoma beating Northwest brings more credibility to this program? I mean, we are in the toughest Division II conference. So I mean, every week is a tough battle. And I mean, great win for them. But I think every week is anyone's game. So.